Hello, once again, we were discussing before about um, the components in the cutaway pictorial over here. Obviously, there's the engine is over here. It's mounted over here. Obviously, we have the air cleaner over here and the air intake system. The fuel filter is over here. Comes from the fuel the fuel pump, which is in the fuel tank. Now you see all the lines going back and forth through a, a fuel filter, eventually to their destination, which is the fuel injector is over here. We uh, will talk about it in a while more in depth. This, on the engine, when we talk about the engine, there is a distributor system and there is a distributorless system where there is no distributor. If you if you saw the other video we spoke about, we had an ignition coil pack where one coil fires two spark plugs. Now, this over here is what the coil pack is. This is obviously all the pulleys and the drive belt over here on this side over here. Throttle body is where the air goes into it, into the air intake system. Again, and just a cutaway, just a cutaway, just to see what's going on, even though it looks a little uh, confusing at first, but we'll go over it. The distributor that we were talking about, we're talking about this, where this is obviously the battery. We, we need first the starter, so it goes through a starter relay from the battery. Then we have to get spark. Now, many systems to give you spark. Go to the ignition key through start when you're in start position. We have the ignition coil. The ignition coil is the transformer, the one that gives you the high voltage, the spark that goes through the wires, that goes through a distributor uh, uh, cap and rotor, which then goes to the appropriate cylinders. Now, over here that you see over here, we have a connector over here. What controls the firing or when it's going to fire the spark is the ECM. Let me go zoom out. The ECM, the computer, the computer controls it. So in this, the distributor is going to have an ignition control module. That's how it works. The module is inside. This type of fuel injection system is too many problems when you have a distributor. Cap and rotor problems like on GMs and all this. So they want to take this away, which they did. You need the ignition coil to give the spark. But how about if the computer controls the ignition control module and we just have spark plug wires going into the cylinders? Let's look at other ones. Okay, now. An overall view of the engine. I made a video about about engines, uh, how an engine works, and I think most videos talk about great videos, make how an engine works and all that. But what needs to be said is the how the computer controls the spark and the fuel injector going to the engine. This is the pistons on the rods, on the connecting rods. Two pistons are down in the downward position. This this one and this one is in the upward position. So, when it's in the upward position, what it's doing is compressing the air, the air fuel ratio. When you get the spark, it's going to push it down. There's a whole video that I made about that, so I'm not going to go too much into de detail about that. But you're looking at the cut cutaway view of the camshaft, the camshaft which is here, this rod right here, and the, the valves over here. Exhaust valves and intake valves. One to let there in and one to let the exhaust out. Like I said, look at the video and then you'll understand that much better the one how an engine works. This is the cutaway that I had of all the things that go on. How confusing, right? All the sensors, all the actuators, it's a cutaway of the battery, of the engine, of the strut system, of the uh, suspension system, the braking system. Just a... a, a basic idea what's going on obviously it's much more much more involved but anyway this is just a cutaway let me show you uh, the distributor system and for this i have to pause over here you have an overview of what's going on in the ignition system from the battery we always start that we go to the starter relay as you can see then it goes to the starter the starting motor pretty uh, uh straightforward 
Now, this is the ignition, ignition switch. This is in run position, this is in the start position. The start position, we need to get the starter relay activated to start the starter motor. Then, in this position, the run position over here, we have a, a resistor, a wire. That very small uh, resistor goes to the ignition coil. Ignition coil is like a transformer. Has a primary and a secondary. Primary has a few turns, and the secondary has much, much more turns. What does that give you? That gives you a step-up transformer, or more voltage on the secondary. So we need 20, 30,000 volts to go to the distributor. So in the run position, when it's in the run position, we get voltage over here to the primary. This is the primary, the one's on the outside, the one that's on the outside, going to this. Now, this, when I had contact over here, contact uh, points, used to turn this on and off, mechanically wise. And then the output from the secondary inside, which is the higher voltage, would go over here, and it would be as distributed to the proper, the spark would be distributed to the proper uh, cylinders, whatever the firing order of that engine was. So basically, going here, this has to be turned off in order to create the collapsing field. This creates a magnetic field, right? Something turns it off. In this case, it's mechanical. I'm gonna show you in a few minutes the, the, the computer does it. But anyway, we turn it off the primary, the magnetic field collapses. When that magnetic field collapses, we get an arc, we get, a, we get the spike, the spark, distributed to this distributor. Let's go to something more advanced, to something a little more electronic. Now, we're, we're taking away the contact points from the distributor. We're putting in, as you guessed it, a computer. Same thing applies. We need to go to the starter motor first, starter relay, the starter motor. Then we go through in the run position, we go through the ignition coil. Again, the same theory. We still have a distributor. But now, what's firing the, 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 the spark on and off is this, the computer. Now it's being done electronically. Okay, so this is the basic diagram of it. Now let's take it a little step further. Now you have a diagram over here. Same thing like we said before. If you saw that video that I spoke about, how an engine works... And I mentioned also the critical, the computer ha involved, it turns off the spark, turns the fuel injector on and off, according to the sensors. Here is our engine. Here is our intake valve. Here is our spark. I spoke about three coil pack, but do you have three coils? Let's say you have a V6. Each one fires or gives a spark to two. Um, two uh, spark plugs at the same time. So V6, three, three coils for each, for each two, that's six. Now, based on when, on the ignition module, he controls this, when to fire. There's a, probably a transistor in there, but it tells it when to fire the spark to go into this. That's exactly what I said in that video when I was describing that. In addition to that, I just said we need sensors. Senses by the crankshaft sensor when it's when it's when it's turning. You have to know the number one cylinder. But over here, the crankshaft sensor over here. We need to know detonation sensor because it gets very hot in that cylinder. We have to know. We have to know if, the, if because when you create give the spark, it's it's like you're giving a match. Like I said before. You have an explosion in there. So that piston is being forced down from all that pressure and that high pressure and the temperature and being forced down from that spark. It doesn't take much. Now, when you have that kind of explosion, you have like, you can say like, a, uh, uh, like you have fires burning afterwards, that nation. Like you have a fire and sometimes you have little fires that come after that, right? Um, so what happens? in the cylinder walls. When those things happen, we need a sensor. It's called, uh, today it's called a knock sensor, but anyway, it's the same concept. So when it, when it, 
it, it, it, it detects that, gives information to the computer. Computer says either we retard the spark or advance the spark based on the sensor's information. The camshaft sensor and the crankshaft sensor. Where's the crankshaft sensor? A, pen, a picture of a V6, right? As you look over here, the spark plugs, here's the, here is the ignition coil pack that we spoke about before. Three coils, six spark plugs coming out of it. Here is three coil, one coil, two coil, three coils. Two spark plugs going out of each one to fire two spark plugs at one time. And we'll get that in a second. Camshaft, here's a, cam, a camshaft. There's a sensor, here's a sensor. Going to the computer. The crankshaft sensor, camshaft sensor, crankshaft sensor, a crankshaft sensor. When you can, when you crank and you can't start, sometimes obviously it's the crankshaft sensor. Now let's go a little deeper into it, like I did one time before, like I spoke about it. We just said one coil fires two, two spark plugs. One with a positive polarity, one with a negative polarity at the same time. Fine. What happens? Here's the coil pack. That's why I gave you a better pictorial. Here's the coil pack we just spoke about. We just said it fires two at the same time. Here's one spark plug. Here's another spark plug. So one coil is firing according to what the computer sees from the, from the sensors. Now what's happening is, one, this cylinder is going up, and the spark is going to hit it. This is compressing the air-fuel ratio, increasing the temperature, increasing the pressure, to try to get the best combustion. This one is going up also. For what reason? To get rid of the air-fuel ratio, what's ever left over after that explosion. So this is compressing it to get that explosion started this is already with the explosion already started and we just want to get rid of the byproduct whatever left over here to the exhaust system okay so they're both on their way up compression stroke it's called excess stroke so one is one since it's firing two at the same time one is going to be used for this to the to ignite it and one is a waste spark they call it it's just going to be wasted that spark but that's how it fires we don't have a distributor in this one. If the picture, if you really, like I said before, you really look at the picture, this is the picture of it. See? Two spark plugs for each one. Two spark plugs for each one. Two spark plugs for each one. One coil, one coil, one coil is fired from one transistor. This is what's going on inside the ignition control module. That's, hopefully you'll understand that a little clearer. Again, a picture, a pictorial. The same thing we've been talking about. We took away the distributor, we put a coil pack in there. Nowadays, you have a coil on plug. So you don't have a distributor, much better system. Again, the battery, to give you the most easiest, I'm trying to simplify this so that people can understand it, the basics. I'm not trying to get too technical like I did in the past. A battery, again, to the ignition switch, right? Now, it goes to 12 volts to go to this one see the 12 volts over here from the battery goes to the computer computer gets the sensors the crankshaft sensor is located in the crankshaft obviously the revolutions it goes over here and it gives it information the map sensor as we call it another sensor gives information that information is taken by the computer it gives that information to, when to fire the spark plugs. Here are the spark plugs. They said this is four, four cylinders. It gives that information when to fire them. The same thing we've been saying all along, just in pictorial forms. So basically remember something. There's many videos how an engine works. Like I said, I just made uh, that one. And what I spoke about was something that's been left out is the computer controls the spark. The computer controls the fuel injector when to open and close it. That's a very important concept to understand fuel injection. Every, ba every engine since, since the beginning of time worked on air-fuel ratio, right? But now they work on computer. As you see all these pictorials, that's why I chose these, to try to give you a better understanding of what's going on. The computer controls everything. Everything, the starter motor relay, the fuel pump, everything, from knock sensors to everything. One more, lighting, the lighting. 
in the olden days, just flipped the switch, headlamps came on, parking lamps came on, right? Switch went right to the bulbs. What happened later on? Same thing like the engine. That's why I tried to build up everything one step at a time. What did we take away? We have the switches. We have the bulbs. What do we put in between them? We put a module. Again, another computer. So in other words, these are the inputs. What's the inputs? The switches. You're putting on the switches. You want the hazard lights on. You want the brake, uh, the brake lights on, the parking lamps, whatever, whatever you want, the turn signal on. These are considered inputs. What are the outputs? These are considered the outputs. The, the lights themselves. The exterior lights, the chimes that you heard every single time when you, when you open the door and you leave the key inside, the chime, the headlamps on, everything. These are the outputs. There has, when there's a computer, there has to be inputs. When there's a computer, there has to be outputs. This is not the PCM that we were talking about. Not the PCM. This is LCM. Lighting control module that we have. The PCM is responsible for one thing. Remember, air and fuel mixture. That's why when you change parts, this is my, my, my belief. You have to change parts when it comes to anything controlling. Air-fuel ratio have to be the, the correct parts, not aftermarket. Mass airflow sensors, all these things, they control the air-fuel ratio by the computer. Those are very, very accurate measurements that the computer has to look at. You can get away with brakes, you can get away with pads, you can get away with rotors and aftermarket, auto zone and all that. But that doesn't go, the, the, that doesn't go to, the, to the computer, unless, except the, the wheel speed sensor for the ABS. But in all in all, anything, this you can do aftermarket, lights, bulbs and all these things. But air-fuel ratio has to be exactly the same thing. I've been saying it for years. Otherwise, you'll be chasing the problem over and over again. But I just wanted to show you the role that computers play today. The engine is the same. We still have valves. We still have we still have intake valves, exhaust, uh, exhaust valve, Set a piston, except for obviously um, uh, 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 um, electric cars. But still, same concept. The only thing is, we don't we don't control it. The computer controls it. The computer turns the fuel pump on. The computer controls the solder. Like I've just been saying, the computer controls the the, the power locks, the lights. There's a body control module now. Not even LCM. The body control module controls the lights with the relay. It grounds the relay. So if you have problems with the lights, not just one bulb or the lights, the relay could be the body control module. Could be the lighting control module depending which lights, exterior lights, interior light, depending which one. So I hope you, this was informative. I just wanted to stress the point, very important, computers control everything. That's just reality. But anyway, please go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto. You'll see much more videos, and I hope, to, please go to see that video, how an engine works. It took me uh, quite some time to make that. Um, video and please to battery test your battery with the low test it's very important to understand that concept anyway thanks for watching